welcome to the 11th class of unpacking yoga practices and teachings as promised we're going to take the subject of prayers Sri Ramakrishna who based his entire life and teachings thought that prayer is extremely powerful it's the best medium to realize god he says god listens to the prayer of a sincere heart now this is not just a sentence that he has uttered every word that shri ram krishna has said has been it his own experience that's why his experiences are true further he says a person can realize god following one's own path if the prayer is sincere again he uses the word sincere god will certainly listen to your prayers if you feel restless for god this is the only condition sincerity and restlessness to see god people pray with various motives but if prayer has got no shopkeeping involved when you you're praying only for light and knowledge and illumination that prayer becomes powerful the second point is unselfish prayer is more powerful than selfish prayer we amongst us kind of joke that yes god listens quickly if you pray for someone else that being said prayer has been with humanity from the very beginning in fact you can trace the history of humanity through its prayers its various forms people from the very beginning have prayed to the gods and the goddesses and the saints and the disembodied spirits also and so many deities nature and everything and this speaks about a profound truth that all religions have arisen from the need to pray this is something universal in the human heart well it means to pray as we usual it is to ask earnestly to entreat this is what prayer does in as you keep on praying intensely deeply what happens is your conception of god is going to change gradually as the intensity grows your conceptions of god also change no longer is god distant it is now close by so this pervasive idea of prayers is there in everybody and especially yoga practitioners tend to kind of be dismissive about it saying that oh it's a common thing and it does not have too much you can say power behind it meditation is better but alas they are wrong prayer is integral to every meditation practice 
And if we can incorporate this into a meditation, it becomes even more powerful. In fact, there is no teacher who does not teach that at the very beginning of meditation, one should pray. We have seen how one needs to be perfectly still to be aware and then make a resolve. And then after that resolve, we pray. We pray to the object of meditation, to the Guru and to all the souls in the universe. Prayer starts extremely small. A small prayer, you've taken it from some text or you've read it somewhere, you've heard it and then it starts and slowly it expands and expands and expands till it covers the entire world. The prayer has that capacity. Like the Buddha, his love and his prayers embraced the whole world. So what happens is, when we pray, we are concentrating our life energies or what you call vital forces or what is generally called as prana or in the east it's called chi like tai chi whatever so we are in an energy field thoughts are but nothing but vibrations they are a form of energy and this vibration is there in every part of your body when you pray you tend to integrate your personality. A tremendous transformation takes place. People are so distracted and so disintegrated. Prayer is what removes of all distraction and integrates it. Your consciousness follows these energy patterns. So as you sit down to meditate, it is extremely important that one prays. As we have see it, shown, the sequence is after we have done a resolve. A resolve is, yes, I am going to sit down for the next one hour or half an hour or 10 minutes and I am really going to concentrate. I am not interested in anything in this world. I am going to concentrate my mind on the deity. So you focus your energies with that resolve and prayer further makes that resolve even stronger. This is the idea that prayers acts like a kind of a, a huge, you can say, momentum. So what happens when we pray? As I said, first there's a transformation and in integration of personality. That's extremely important. Second, thoughts, like Swami Vivekananda says, are things. They travel far. And prayer is the highest form of thought. So when we pray, we are, as it were, sending out these vibrations all over the world. And every prayer, every good thought goes and lasts in the psychic realm. So when you pray, you may be alone in your room, but you are getting connected with that massive psychic realm, the realm of higher ideas, the realm of the mind. And as you get connected to that psychic realm, you're opening your, yourself out also to all the prayers that have been uttered in the past by millions and billions of people. Imagine, all these prayers have coalesced in these psychic realms. So you, when you are praying, you open yourself up to an immense 
power, spiritual power that flows through you, become a channel. That's why when they say, when you pray for others, your prayer, if it is sincere, becomes extremely powerful. This is the idea. So you are sitting and meditating quietly in your room. Nobody even knows you exist. But at that moment, you are connected with the subtle universe. Okay. Now, there is another aspect of prayers taught by great sages and saints or even avatars have a special appeal and a special power within them. They help you. And we know Sri Ramakrishna has taught us innumerable prayers for every occasion. There is also, as they say, pray without ceasing. I mean, it is not only you pray just before meditation. That is not the idea. You pray unceasingly. There is a constant undercurrent. Prayers condensed become what is called a mantra. A mantra is condensed prayer. As you keep on repeating, what happens is, there is a school of philosophy, many schools of philosophy, they say that the mantra or the prayer itself has the capacity to bestow upon you what you are praying for. The mantra itself has the power. That is why they say, Every mantra is powerful, every prayer is powerful, especially that which has been uttered or which is being uttered or chanted by millions and millions of people, thousands and thousands of years. It is natural. So here we have the, the prayer itself is inherently powerful by its nature. And secondly, you integrate yourself, your mind and that in integrates everything else and at the same time it becomes you become as it were connected with this vast realm of I. Swami Vivekananda says when asked about prayers he say by prayers one's subtle powers are aroused the subtle powers of the soul the soul feeds on prayer. Like we feed the body, the body has hunger and need. The mind also has its own hunger and it has to be fed. What about the soul? The soul is fed by prayer. And as it keeps on growing and growing and growing, you will find that prayer as unceasing. So, we have Swami Vivekananda and Holy Mother and all the direct disciples, even Sri Ramakrishna. He used to show in one instance, he said, he threw himself on the ground and flapped his limbs and uh, he is weeping like a child to Mother, to the Divine Mother, praying to her. This is the way to pray and he has taught us how to pray. Go with that simplicity. So in yoga, it is as you sit down to meditate, as you sit still and you've calmed yourself, you're making all those, you can say, resolves and then you pray first to your guru or to your God or for the good of all the world. What happens is, it takes you away from your egocentric, you can say personality that is trying to meditate. Otherwise, the ego itself is meditating on itself. That is wrong. So, when you pray, you are invoking a higher aspect, a higher power as you can say a goal something that will be reached. We will take in the future some aspects of how to perform this japa, which is mantra. 
but suffice it to say that we need to have that intense prayer. So what do we pray for? We pray for, as I say, success in yoga. We pray for enlightenment. You pray that all the teachers in the, of the past who are great yogis and saints and sages, that they send their blessings to you and you fortified with that can plunge in and pray. So, let us practice a little about this prayer to put it into that particular sequence that we have been talking about. So, please sit down still and straight, keep your head, neck and your body in a straight line. Keep your gaze fixed right outside your chin, please. Close your eyes or half close your eyes. Become aware of your diaphragm rising up and down. Feel your rib cage now expanding and contracting. Feel your breath in your throat, please. Now feel your breath in your nostrils. Be perfectly still. Hold your gaze steady. Relax your tongue. Relax all your facial muscles. Straighten your posture if you are still not comfortable with it. Now make a resolve silently. Swami Vivekananda says, You can. Meditate on whatever you like. I will meditate on the heart of a lion, for that gives me strength. Meditate on God or symbol or your guru. Now, Pray, pray very intensely. I want you to focus on your prayer. Let it be as simple as possible. O oh Lord, I am thy child. Approaching you with faith, humility and courage. Be gracious unto me, O Lord. Awaken my soul. I want to see thee. Help me in all my struggles in life. Continue your prayers, please. Your 
personal private prayers. Don't pray for anything but light and knowledge and illumination. Now stop praying, watch the mind, the screen of your mind. And if there is distraction, direct your attention to what you are going to meditate upon only. Now look within you, there is a vast space within you and it is luminous. You are entering your own space of the mind. Hold on to that object of your prayer intensely. Now once again pray, pray intensely. Focus all your energies in that prayer. Okay, relax. Take a long deep breath, please. And you can open your eyes. I have seen people getting transformed, their lives getting transformed through the inside. I have seen people who used to shudder and quake as they used to pray, because that very intensity of that thought was kind of like a volcanic activity within their minds. It was blasting off all ignorance, it was blasting off all things which were obstructing. This prayer, prayers in general, are the best form of removing all obstacles from the mind. You will encounter many obstacles as you go. And these obstacles come deep down from the subconscious mind. Yes, there are layers and layers and layers. It's like a geologist who is looking at the Grand Canyon and seeing that, yes, th this is 50 million years, 100 million years, and, and, and goes on and on and on and on because those sediments, those signs are there. So similarly in the mind, there are those various layers of old fossilized thoughts. They obstruct to you. And prayer is the very best instrument for you to cut your way through. It's like you're cutting your way through all these obstacles so the efficacy of prayer has been demonstrated in the lives of all the saints. If you see any saint everywhere, in any culture, the very foundation of that person, that saints, or the holy person's prayer is nothing but, you can say, that love for God. His life, his life is based on prayer. Another aspect is, as you pray, you know, you are doing good karma, as simple as that. And whatever you do, you send out to the world, it comes back to you a hundredfold. Swami Vivekananda says, if you do it con consciously, your prayers are answered. But if you do it unconsciously, perhaps one in ten prayers are answered. So, the idea is even if your prayers are just prayers and they are not 
aimed at a particular symbol or a deity, pray for the good of the world and that comes back to you. Why is there so much restlessness? Why is there so much mental ill health going around here? Because we don't pray. And, and if we are praying, we are praying for some kind of selfish object. So, as we keep on praying, praying for others, praying for the welfare of the world, all these obstacles will go. Your psychological, even your external obstacles, you will find things leaving way for you, making way for you as you go through life. So, this is what the prayer can do. So, try to integrate it in your spiritual practices. In fact, if you can just pray during your spiritual practices, that itself is sufficient. Of course, as you keep on praying, slowly and slowly what happens is, the, you can say, it becomes shorter and shorter. Sri Ramakrishna used to say that uh, in one of this, uh, in songs, Nitai Amar Mata Hati. It's a kind of a line on a song. And then as the intensity grows more and more and more, so he's saying Nitai Hati, Nitai Hati. And then some then it becomes Hat, Hati, Hati, Hati. And then ha. And then that person gets into something called a Bhava Samadhi, a spiritual trance. So just praying intensely, the words then come out in a kind of a, to the soul and it is intense and it is not going to be very long, not elongated, just a word remains. So, if you are going to pray, the, uh, going for the Lord's prayer, so the Lord's prayer is quite long, as you keep on praying, finally you will just be uttering only Jesus, 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 that's a, that will be your prayer. The whole Lord's prayer is encapsulated in that word Jesus. Sri Ramakrishna also says that we have something called the Gayatri Mantra. That's very powerful, very, it's very ancient. So it's part of a ritual called Sandhya, the evening worship. So, Sandhya is saying merges into the Gayatri. The rituals, they drop off and merge only in the prayer, the Gayatri prayer. And the Gayatri itself merges into Om, just Om. You, you just repeat Om and you get there. And then Om merges into Brahman. So, it kind of, there's a tapering down of things. So, prayer is essential for one's own welfare, for one's spiritual development and for the good of the world. Okay. Pray unceasingly, that is the idea. If you do not have faith in that prayer, we do not have faith in God, start praying. Faith will grow, love will grow. And as faith and love grows, meditation becomes easy. There are people who have been meditating for a long time without that necessary intensity. Prayer will give you that intensity. I remember my, my guru saying, we used to meditate so long and so deep that it was as if, yeah, Tonight, I am going to get into Samadhi. Yes, it was as if it was just within reach. The realization of God was just within reach. And this is what prayer can do for you. It can bring that God which is unseen, distant, unknown. It will make it known, close. And it will be your God. Not in the sense of fanaticism, but you will develop a very personal relationship with him. 
this is important in yoga because when you are meditating on a particular thing on a god or a goddess or a saint or a sage or a symbol you have to be connected to that object of meditation and prayer brings in that connection okay. we stop here for questions if there are what does it mean by psychic realm okay i'm not talking about any kind of mysterious powers and all these things okay by psychic realm i i i mean the realm of the soul there is a realm it's called a spiritual realm i use the word psychic realm because in indian philosophy or indian spiritual traditions it is called bhava jagat the world of the bhava okay now what is bhava bhava is that realm of spirituality you can see god in that realm take for instance there was a woman disciple of shri ram krishna she was she attained the very heights of spirituality her name was gopaler ma gopala's mother and she practiced her spiritual disciplines for a very very long time and her chosen ideal was the baby krishna that is we have like you know you have baby jesus and all that so we have uh, krishna also baby krishna and she used to pray and meditate on this deity one day she actually saw that deity manifest and not only manifest it became real to her that deity gopala played with her pulled her sari taunted her teased her went around helping her in a housework went to bathe in the ganga together was annoyed when he was given something which was very coarse to eat and she carried that gopala that baby krishna and ran to dakshineshwar where she saw shri ram krishna and that baby gopala krishna was entering and exiting shri ram krishna's body now all these visions these visions are tremendous visions it's not possible for just ordinary souls to have th- these kind of this intensity so where did she see all this the, the the these visions she saw all these in the realm of the bhava that's what i mean is the psychic realm they their minds are here but obviously they are immersed in that realm so that realm is you can function but your body your hands and feet kind of there is a kind of a uh, a slight kind of para- paralysis that you experience kind of a deadness a dullness on the extremities and your body itself is in a kind of heightened state of awareness and you are seeing this whole play in this realm this realm has been brought down as it were so it's a tremendous you can say realm it is the world of the spirit the spiritual world rather can so that is the psychic realm so the next question is pranam swami one sometimes hears that one should guard against sentimentality during prayers can you please elaborate uh, yeah you got to have the sentiment of love the sentimental is oh god i was hurt by somebody who said something please take care of that guy yeah no we you don't need to have those kind of prayers like i said one prays through strength for more strength it's not a beggar's prayer you are praying to god you are 
you are connected to God as you are a part of God or a child of God and that makes your prayer even more better. So sentiments, what sentiment? Keep a spiritual sentiment that I am a child of God and pray. Like pray like a hero. Okay? No quaking and no crying. Those kind of, even Swami Vivekananda did not like all these pray, VP, VP prayers. So when you can understand this thing, that you are going to pray only for limit, for unlimited knowledge and devotion and power to work and the power of faith for the vision of God, it leaves that ordinary sentimentality and connects you to the spiritual realm.